will say it first. That's it. They're off the racing for the Yorkshire Outdoors Adventure Experiences Handicap Stakes. Boson Breeze came out like a bullet. Also out well is Noble Storm as they settle down early doors. Tucked in behind them a little bit deeper is Forest Edge who's getting a reminder. Next to that one in pink and green is first in command. Now Vega's just behind the pace as well. It's Noble Storm in the quarter jacket. White Cap who's crossed to the rail shows the way by a length to first in command racing second. Now Vega in the hoop jacket between horses and then the orange and blue towards the inside of Boson Breeze. Steps is tucked in behind those in blue and white there followed by pearl blue in the pale blue with the red triple diamond and white sleeves Kylie in last towards the back with the yellow cap and hazel rig in the black and red is last they're already down towards the final for long and a half and it's first in command bursting through to tackle noble storm kept going steps between horses and that wide of runners trying to come with the rushes forest edge but they're inside the final for long now and it's steps who's taken over steps quickens on by a length post and breeze back for more towards the near side but steps is in front as they race to the line and steps has won it to Bose and Breeze, Noble Stormers next, then first in the uh, command and Kylik in last. Winner at four to one for Roger Varian and Thomas Brown. The five pound claim continues to bang in the winners. He's uh, getting some good rides now as well. Plenty of people have latched on to the fact that he's a good rider and steps from a pound below his last winning handicap markers come through to win this sprint handicap going away from Burson Breeze who travelled well on the rail and couldn't quite pick up when the gap did appear he, he had every chance to get there and take it but he couldn't quicken up like Steps did in the uh, at the same point in the race and back in third was Noble Storm um, Ed McMahon's horse under Royston French in third but Steps uh, a nice performance from him I think he dropped to a good mark he had that recent run under his belt he's reversed one with Kalik in last and um, ridden by a really promising five-pound claimer has won quite nicely. Headgear, I guess, is is a relevant thing with him, isn't it? Um, he had a few near misses, a couple of near misses last summer, and then in blinkers he was back in the winner's enclosure at Newmarket. Uh, he di hasn't run uh, his last two starts, including his reappearance in blinkers, but they were back on here, and that seems to have uh, brought him back to his best with a bit of help from the assessor as well. Yep, the blinkers back on, and he's back in the winner's enclosure, as Dave says. Their steps at four to one takes the four o'clock. Right, we're off to Newmarket next, Dave. The 405. This is the um, best odds guaranteed on racing at coral.co.uk. Fairway stakes, list event for the three year olds, almost 21,000 to the winner. Ten felons the trip, only the five runners, but a good quality race. And Tahir is the market leader at seven to four. Side bin and Mikel Barcelona. So you're looking to give them a treble on the day. Mr. Impatience likely to front run here at 9 to 4. 7 to 2 for Jammy Guest. Uh, Hoarding at 6 to 1 and Hurley Warrior at 16 to 1. Um, quite keen on Jammy Guest myself here, though, but we'll start with Tahir. Side bin and Mikel Barcelona. First start of the season. Up in trip for the first time. Not convinced that that will suit him. No, he's down in class, which almost certainly will. Um, remember, uh, he was the winner of the Chesham, wasn't he, at Royal Ascot last year on the on the back of a a wide margin rip and maiden win. Ooh, what's he doing there? He just sort of spooked at something. Um, funnily enough, like 48 hours ago, I don't think many of us would have touched Said Bin Saror or Godolphin horses uh, with too much enthusiasm just because they hadn't got going. And now, over the last hour, they've had what, willing foe, now they've had far. They had a winner yesterday as well, didn't they? Um, and so suddenly they're the yard to be with. I think you're probably right about the trip. I think that is a bit of a concern. Um, if you let the ratings do your work, then you probably take a chance with that. Mm. Yeah. I liked Jammy Guest, who at the moment on ratings hasn't done it. And you look at his official mark, he's got a lot to find. He's only got a, a mark of 84 on the official scale. But... It's more about potential with this horse, I think, and the potential for him to improve for a step up in trip for some more experience. He's much less exposed than the vast majority of these. He's only had two starts in his career. He's from a yard in good form, and he looked like a horse who would appreciate the longer trip last time out. He seems uncomplicated as well. I just like his way of going about things, and I think he's set for a big chunk of improvement. Yeah, I mean, basically, you, you've got to ignore 
uh, the rating that he's got. Because in a sense, though, it doesn't really mean anything, does it? He's only no. had two starts. He's won a Lingfield maiden, so pretty much whatever he does, unless he wins by 30 lengths, he's going to get a mark in the mid-80s, isn't yeah. he? Um, he's by Duke of Marmalade, a horse that we remember a few years ago as a 10 furlong horse, principally. Um, and so... There are there are many reasons why Jammy Guess would leave or yeah would would leave behind that rating of 84. Um, he's really the unexposed one here. I know Holy Warriors only had the three starts. Um, Mr. Impatience, I thought, was another one worth looking at. Um, he was beaten six lengths um, by Ruler of the World in the Vars uh, at Chester. Prior to that, um, he was fourth in. Um, the uh, uh, valuable it's the Epsom Derby trial, yeah, isn't it? The, what's Blue it? It? the Blue Ribbon, it? isn't it? Yeah. Um, he's rated 97. That puts him 11 pounds shy hmm. of uh, that year here, although he's, he's getting four pounds from that ride. He's got a real pronounced rounded action as Mr. Impatience. Um, he won really well by a wide margin first time up at Doncaster. His best form last year had been on softer ground as well. The ground at Chester when he came back to form last time out was probably a little bit softer than the official good at that point. Yeah. And he didn't look that happy. Now, it might have been Epsom and the track that he didn't handle. It might have been the ground. But I think for all that it's good ground at Newmarket, it's probably on the quick side of good. And I would just have a little bit of a worry about him on this surface. But he will stride out in front and keep on galloping. And if he does go on the ground, I think he's the he's a viable player here. But... I liked Jammy Guest. Last one is going in. Here's the call with Derek Thompson. Seed on racing at coral.co.uk fairway stakes. They're all in. They're all out there racing. Here we go over the straight mile and a quarter. Against the right, Mr. Impatience, one of the first to go on. Keeping this one company is Holy Warrior. And up on the left, here comes Jammy Guest to try and take him along, just as he did when winning at Lingfield last time out. He's got the rails, and Jammy Guest and Seb Sanders takes them along at a good clip. In second place, Mr. Impatience, Joe Fanning. Third is Holy Warrior, Robert Winston. Then held up towards the rear. The blue colours on there, Michael Barcelona, and hoarding in the green, Rab Havlin. Coming down now with about six left to run in the best odds guaranteed on racing at coral.co.uk, fairway stakes, and in the blue and white colours, Jamie Guest from the George Margeson stable here at Newmarket. Mr. Impatience, hoping to give trainer Mark Johnson his 15th winner in the past two weeks. He's second. Third on the outside is Holy Warrior. Running fourth now is hoarding in the favourite. There is the back marker of the Quintet as they come down now with five left to run in race five here at Newmarket, the 405. And up front, Jamie Guest takes them along as it's gone real good clip right from the word go. In second place is Mr. Impatience. Third is Holy Warrior. Fourth being niggled out. There's under pressure here, the favourite. And he's towards the rear. Going nicely still is Hordy. He's getting a wake-up call on the favourite there. Let's see what happens now as they come down with three and a half left to run. It's still Jammy Guest. Here in the yellow is Mr. Impatience, who was second in the Chester Vars last week. So we know he'll get the trip all right. In third is Holy Warrior. In fourth is Hoarding, and the favourite there is under pressure. Here they come down now, past the bushes. Two and a half furlongs left to run. And Jammy Guest against the rails. Here comes Holy Warrior running a big race. Now the favourite there is beginning to get into top gear. Then comes Hoarding in the green as well. Four horses separated by about a length and a half. In the green colours, Hoarding on the far side in the blue. It is there against the rails, Jammy Guest. It's Hoarding and Rob Havlin. But uh, there won't go away on the far side. And he's sticking at him all the way up to the line. Hoarding just, here they come towards the line, this is close, wow! Hoarding might just have got there in a photo from there, certainly back in third, another photo, Mr. Impatience might have got up on the line, that's one for the judge. I think Hoarding's won it. It's not one for the judge at all, Hoarding's yeah. clearly won it by a head. A, a head, almost a neck, he's won it, that's a, he's won it by a head. <laughs> the pair of them are well clear, uh, Hoarding has been confirmed the winner um, under Robert Havlin for John Gosden uh, Tahir did see out the trip he finishes in second spot Jamie Guest I think managed to finish in third um, he made the running on the rail and just didn't quite pick up as well uh, Hoarding has gone through this race more comfortably than has been the case in the past he, he's often been a little bit lazy um, Tahir hasn't really gone with much fluency at all but he's kept on galloping and seen it out quite well but he, he wasn't quite good enough to get the better of Hoarding today No, he certainly um, 
was a horse who, who looked the first in trouble, Thay. Um, I think it's fair to say that uh, the winner hoarding, well, not only has he raced lazily, but he hasn't, uh, he hasn't always been the most responsive to pressure either, has he? But um, here, the two of them draw clear of uh, Jammy Guest, who's made it against that rail. And uh, Thay has responded to pressure, and he's had no 